Thank you, everyone, for having me here. I already have so many ideas of collaborations with Juan, Erica, and Jordan, so I'm really, really excited. Um, life is fragile. With each year that passes, we and our loved ones have an exponentially higher chance of developing a serious illness. A serious illness is often traumatic and brings with it intense emotional distress. This distress can color how we live our last years, months, and days of our precious lives, and how those we leave behind adjust to life after we are gone. My father died of lung cancer. It was a long and exhausting journey filled with a relentless search for a cure. My mother transformed herself into a superwoman, somehow managing to care my dad for my dad on top of her job, always with a smile on her face, my sunshine, as my father used to call her, doing everything she could to keep him comfortable, keep his hope for a cure alive, and keep him going every day through his treatments. My dad knew that he was dying, but he kept his distress buried inside of him. He didn't want to upset my mom. When he died, my mom collapsed into a deep depression that lasted over one year. Sure, there was normal grief about the hole left by my dad's death. They had been married for over 40 years, but there was more than that. There were years of neglecting her own needs to be 100% there for my dad. There were regrets about missed opportunities for conversations about my dad's last years of life and about how to manage his treatment. These negative consequences could have been prevented. Our healthcare system needs to do better to support us and our loved ones when we experience serious illness. We need a paradigm shift. Serious illness is a mind-body experience that brings with it intense emotional distress for both the person with a medical diagnosis and their family caregivers. We need to go beyond drugs, beyond surgeries, and beyond the search for a cure. My vision is to create a healthcare system where we treat the emotional functioning of the patient and their family caregivers with just as much care as we treat the patient's medical disease. I will tell you a story that highlights this vision. Seven years ago, I got a call from Tracy, the head nurse in the New York ICU. She said, Anna Maria, can you come talk to this family? We have a 53-year-old male. He had a stroke. He's a retired history professor, very anxious, has three grown kids. His wife is here, very anxious. They don't want to leave his bedside. We're worried about them. I went to the ICU and met William and his wife, Laura. We talked. William showed considerable distress. He described himself as someone who had always been physically active and enjoyed taking care of others. He was frustrated about why he had a stroke, worried about having another stroke in the future, and also worried about the impact of the stroke on his family and his wife, Laura. Laura, on the other hand, described herself as strong under pressure and denied emotional distress. However, she could not leave William's bedside to get sleep, talk with friends, or exercise, things that she identified as very important for her emotional health. Anxiety was written on her face. We started our work together. We normalized William's frustration and Laura's reluctance to leave his bedside. We discussed emotional regulation skills. William was able to say, I can feel frustrated with my situation, and grateful that I'm alive. Laura was also able to say, I can keep faithful watch over William and take time for myself and trust that the medical system will keep him safe. I returned the next day to talk to the two of them together again. I learned that William had a history of untreated anxiety. He knew that he needed coping skills. His family knew that he was reluctant to talk about his anxiety and accept help, and they were thrilled that he finally wanted to accept help. I was happy. A stroke, a serious illness, can lead to positive change. 
William made good initial recovery and was transferred to rehab. We continued our work together over Zoom. We discussed how to communicate about his diagnosis with his family and friends, how to navigate transitioning from a caretaker to being cared for, how to support his son who had recently become a father, and how to navigate the fear of stroke recurrence while still living a meaningful life. We identified that William's root for anxiety was concerned about being a burden on others and losing his independence. He didn't want to be like his parents who had required substantial care as they aged. William did not want this for his wife and for his kids. We were able to work through these worries and help him reframe some of his thoughts about becoming a burden or becoming like his parents as they aged. Laura also became able to understand that her reluctance to leave William's bedside and her constantly checking in with the medical team was rooted in anxiety and that she was trying to find a sense of control in the middle of so much uncertainty. The couple was able to, for the first time, engage in conversations and share their anxieties and worries with each other while using emotional regulation and other coping skills to support their emotional recovery individually and together as a couple. By the time we reached our last meeting and William was discharged home, both Laura and William felt at ease and prepared to support each other with skills as William continued his physical recovery. William and Laura's story inspired Recovering Together, the first evidence-based program that improves emotional distress in dyads of patients admitted to the neuroscience intensive care unit and their family caregivers. We developed Recovering Together with funding from the American Heart Association and from the National Institute of Health. We published more than 20 manuscripts supporting Recovering Together. The treatment manual for Recovering Together is being published this summer by Oxford Press. William died a few weeks after our last meeting. Laura called me to share the news. She was proud that she was able to use one of the Recovering Together skills to share how she was feeling, devastated and grateful that she and William got to share a new level of closeness because of our work together. She shared that the skills of the program are helping her navigate William's loss and helping her find a new sense of meaning and purpose. Remember my vision to create a healthcare system where we treat the patients and the caregivers' emotional distress with just as much care as we treat the patient's medical disease? Recovering Together is an example of this new model of care that can only be found at MGH. We have now started to expand Recovering Together to other populations. We have adapted Recovering Together to support parents who have babies in the neonatal ICU, and we have developed Resilient Together to support patients with dementia, um, MS, and ALS, and their family caregivers. The model has traction. What we observed with William and Laura is being replicated with other serious illness diagnoses. I now share this work with my mother, who is still alive. She loves it. This work has allowed us to experience a new level of closeness and for her to process her grief surrounding my dad's last years of life. I want her future illness to be managed differently than my dad. And I want this for all of us in this room and for our families. Thank you.